Hello, and welcome to episode 16 of Sir Astero's Star Wars painting series. In this episode, we're going to paint Han Solo from Fantasy Flight's Star Wars Imperial Assault. For Han Solo, I'm going to be giving more attention to the skin tone than I have with previous Caucasian characters from the series. And I'll be trying out an optional non-metallic metal approach for the blaster pistol. We'll still be following the usual steps, which means priming the miniature white, laying down the base colours, adding some shades, and then the highlights, before adding some finishing touches. Let's begin with step two. Before painting, you will need to decide if you're going to dry brush the pistol following the method explored in previous episodes, or if you're going to use the more time-consuming method of manual highlighting as I'm doing. If you choose the quicker dry brush method, then now would be the time to do so. If you're going to manually highlight the pistol as I'll be doing later on, then you can begin applying the base colours right away, in any order you like. I'm going to begin by giving the skin a base coat of Bugman's Glow. This gives us quite a dark foundation to work from, and will help create a rich, high contrast finish for the skin later on. For the cream coloured shirt, I'm using a roughly equal mix of Screaming Skull and Ceramite White. I like to retouch mistakes as I go along. I'm now using some Steel Legion Drab for the belt and holster. I'm also painting the pistol grip with this. This may seem a shade too light, but will look fine once we've added the wash in the next step. Han Solo's upper belt is a darker colour, so I'm using Rhinox Hide. And I almost missed the holster strap on the leg, which I'm also painting with the Steel Legion Drab. For the hair, I'm using a roughly 2 to 1 mix of Mornfang Brown and Cantor Blue. Incidentally, I tend to use an older brush for thinning and mixing my paints, and not usually the brush I actually paint with. I'm then going to add some Talon Sand to this mix, to create a broad highlight. Some pure Talon Sand can then be used for the very top of the head for a final highlight. I'm doing this highlighting now so that the shade we'll be adding later has a chance to blend the layers down for us. For the trousers, I'm using pure Cantor Blue. I'll be increasing the level of purple here with the wash in the next stage. As always, we shouldn't settle for anything less than a truly deep, solid finish, which might mean we end up applying up to three or four thin layers. We're also now going to paint the broken red stripe down the side of Han's trousers. Our plan is to create a neat, solid stripe first, which we can then break up with some thin strips of Cantor Blue. This should be a lot easier than trying to paint each red strip individually. So I'm going to begin by painting the solid red stripe using Mephiston Red. Throughout this video I'm using a size 2 brush, which might sound big for fine detail work like this, 
but it's the fineness of the point that matters more than the size of the brush. Notice how close to the brush end I'm holding the brush to give me maximum control. I'm then painting over the line a couple more times until I'm satisfied it's as bright as it's going to get. Since we've yet to shade or highlight this area, we can easily neaten up the stripe with our plain Cantor Blue if we need to. This is the reason for painting this stripe now, rather than after adding the shades and highlights. Once we're happy we have a neat solid line, we can brighten the red using some Evil Sun's Scarlet. We now break the line up with the Cantor Blue, nicely recreating this small but important detail on Han's outfit. The only slight disadvantage to painting this line now is that we'll have to avoid painting over it with the shades and highlights later on. Now we're going to paint the black areas. For the gun and boots, I'm using a dark 2 to 1 mix of black and Mechanicus Standard Grey. For the waistcoat, to create a subtle bit of variety, I'm going to add about a brush full of Cantor Blue to this mix, to create a slightly different shade of black. This is a subtle touch and of course entirely optional. Finally, I'm going to paint the belt buckles. For this, I'm going to use Runefang Steel, but as this is quite a thin layer paint, I might first lay down some Celestra Grey to more easily cover the parts of the buckles that have been hit with the brown. Here's the Celestra Grey. And now the Runefang Steel. Now would be a good time to do some final retouching of any scrappy edges before we move on to the shading. In no particular order, these are the shades we can use to begin giving Han Solo some depth. For the skin, I'm using Reichland Flesh Shade. For the belt and holster, I'm using Agrax Earthshade. I'm also hitting the buckles with this to give them a more tarnished look. To give the leather a darker, more worn look, I'm going to apply two or three layers of this shade to really build up the depth. I'm now going to mix an equal quantity of Agrax Earthshade and Nuln Oil to shade the hair. And I'm also using this to shade the shirt. The reason I've added the Nuln Oil it's not so much because I want to darken the shade, but mostly to reduce the level of brown. I'm 
I'm adding some additional shade to further deepen the tone in the darkest parts of the hair. I'm now using pure non-oil for all of the black areas. I might add a second layer of this to achieve a deeper black. Finally, I'm creating an equal mix of Drukii Violet and Drakenhof Nightshade for the trousers. We should take care here to avoid the red stripe. Once dry, we're ready to begin the highlights. I'm going to begin by highlighting the skin. In summary, I'll be highlighting up using three colours, with mixtures of adjacent tones in between, which means five separate tones in total. So we'll begin with the Bugman's Glow, which will then mix equally with some Cadian Flesh Tone. We'll then use pure Cadian Flesh Tone, which will then mix equally with some Kislev Flesh and our final lightest shade will then be some pure Kislev flesh. You could save time and effort however by skipping the mixed tones and just using the three pure skin tones. The results might not look as smooth, but will still be plenty good enough for the tabletop. So I'm beginning with a reapplication of Bugman's Glow. Reapplying base colours like this often doesn't show much of a difference, but I still find it useful as it helps me to get to know the miniature and begin planning how the subsequent highlights are going to go. I'm now adding a roughly equal amount of the Cadian Flesh Tone for the next highlight. Notice when applying a fresh tone, I tend to start with the hands, so I get a chance to test the colour and consistency before working on the more important face area. This highlight is still covering the majority of the skin, but we're leaving a nice bit of shadow in places like beneath the chin and in the eye sockets, and we can also leave the lips untouched. Now we can use some pure Cadian Flesh Tone. This is the main mid-tone colour and should cover a good portion of the skin. As usual, the paint should always be thinned enough to allow for some translucency, and we should aim to build the highlight up in slightly reducing areas. We can see that the skin is already looking quite similar in tone to that of my own hand. Next, we're going to mix in a roughly equal quantity of Kislev Flesh. We are now really focusing on the smaller raised areas, such as the knuckles and fingertips for the hands, and for the face we want to emphasise the forehead, cheekbones and bridge of the nose. We can now finish the skin tone off with a small final highlight using some pure Kislev Flesh, hitting just a small spot within the previously emphasised areas. These last few highlights are for me where the real magic happens, 
as each brushstroke gives the character that extra bit of dimension and life. We'll return to the face for some finishing touches in a while. Now let's highlight the rest of the miniature. For the hair, I'm adding just a few gentle highlights with some Talon sand. If you find yourself going a little too far with any of these highlights, we can always tone them down with a little of the previously applied shade. For the shirt, I'm simply reapplying some thinned Screaming Skull and White mix. I'm applying this in a couple of thin layers, covering up any unwanted patches of shade, but leaving areas where the wash has created a nice bit of shadow. I'm adding additional layers to the top surface of the arms, creating a bright, solid tone, but allowing the shade that's built up in the underarm and some of the creases to remain. I'm also giving some extra emphasis to the upper chest area. I'm leaving the upper darker belt as it is, and for the lighter belt and holster, I'm using Balor Brown, although most shades of light brown, including Talon Sand, would also be fine for this. For this highlight, I'm applying mostly small hits to the edges and corners. For the trousers, I'm starting with Cantor Blue, mixed with a tiny amount of Evil Sun's Scarlet. This will be almost the same colour as the shaded tone, and should cover all of the flat and raised areas. Just take care to avoid the red stripe. We can then add a small amount of white to create a lighter tone, which we're using to provide a broad highlight to the upturned parts of the thighs and raised ridges of fabric.
One more small portion of white mixed in will let us add a smaller final highlight, focusing on places like the knees and inner parts of the highlights already added. For the boots I'll be relying mostly on some gloss varnish to be added later to provide some natural highlights for us. I would still be tempted to add some of my own however, starting with some Eshin Grey which I've darkened with a little black. Here I'm placing an emphasis on the toe caps as well as the creases both at the rear and front of the boots. I'm then following that with a small hit of pure Eshin Grey. For the jacket, I'm going to use the same black and Eshin Grey mix that I used for the boots and I'm going to add a small amount of Cantor Blue, once again to introduce a subtle bit of variety. We only need a gentle highlight here, focusing on the tops of the shoulders and the raised pockets and the folds on the back. If this was black leather, then I would take the highlights quite a bit further, but for a matte black fabric, this is fine. We're now going to highlight the pistol, and instead of a quick and easy metallic dry brush, I'm going to spend a bit more time building up some high contrast highlights to give the impression of a glinting black metallic finish. I'm starting with some Mechanicus Standard Grey, darkened with a little black. I'm painting most of the tip of Hans Pistol with this as it has a lighter metallic shade. I'm then carefully highlighting most of the edges and raised details on the rest of the gun. I'm keeping the highlights quite tightly focused on a few small edges and protrusions, and leaving the larger flat areas black. I'm then hitting all of these areas again with some pure Mechanicus Standard Grey. As before, I'm covering most of the muzzle with this. I'm then mixing in some Administratum Grey. and highlighting a more selective area on the muzzle. And once again, adding some glinting highlights to the rest of the gun. And then using some pure Administratum Grey. You could of course stop highlighting as soon as you have a look you're happy with. I've chosen to create a final, even lighter mix with the addition of some white scar. These last few highlights want to be as small as possible.
We then tidy up the muzzle with a little black. Even if the highlighting isn't perfect up close, the gun should now have a cleaner, more eye-catching look when viewed from a normal gaming distance. To finish the highlights off, I'm going to brighten the large buckle with a final coat of Runefang steel. And now we're ready to add some finishing touches. The first finishing touch I'm going to add is a thin blue glaze to the chin area, using a roughly 5 to 1 mix of medium with Drakenhof Nightshade. The first layer of this will be barely perceptible. but two or three layers should give us a subtle shift of tone, giving a cooler look to the stubbly areas, and by contrast, giving the lips a warmer, more fleshy appearance. For the eyes, I'm applying a slither of white. followed by a dab of dark grey in the centre of each. Any oversized parts of the eyes can then be tidied up with a little Bugman's glow. To finish the face off, I'm adding some eyebrows using the original hair base tone mix, Mornfang Brown with Cantor Blue. I've thinned this down and I'm applying a very narrow line just above each eye. After spraying with a matte varnish, we can now give the boots a shine with some thinned gloss varnish. Now we either paint the base or, as I'm doing, rebase the figure using the steps from episode 10. And Han Solo is complete. Thank you for watching and liking the video, and if you're a subscriber, for helping the channel recently break the 10,000 subscriber mark. If you really like the video and would like to help me make more, hit the Patreon link and join the growing number of patrons who are helping to fund the hours that are invested in creating this work. As a token of gratitude to existing patrons, I have painted a second hand solo to be given away in a live draw in the coming days. Join me again soon when we return to finish off the remaining base set heroes from Star Wars Imperial Assault. Happy painting!